It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and we're glad to know that you're still there and watching us. And right now, we're going to look at the fact that lawmakers are pushing for 32 more federal universities. 32, that's almost like the same number of uh, states that we have uh, in our country. We have um, a management consultant, international development advisor for Lagos State, in the person of Oludare Akinaja. Uh, joining us this morning. Good morning and welcome to the program. Morning to have me. Okay, we have so many universities that uh, ASU and Konwa are complaining that they are underfunded. Now the lawmakers want 32 more. Do you think this is a solution to our educational problem or it is going to worsen? Uh, so... <laughs> I had the news the other day, and I, and, I, and I wondered what the intention was. But um, I've, I've been around the development for a while, and I understand. So what is happening is that we're solving a problem, and we're trying to build on a faulty foundation. OK? So what is happening is that the universities are not sufficient, OK, to handle the uh, number of uh, young people that are that, that, that finish that come out of secondary school. That's a problem. But they are coming to to look at other areas of the challenge, which includes the ones we already have. How functional are they? That's that's the question they should be asking. Instead of building more universities. I understand we need more universities, but this is not the time for more universities. You are complaining the university lectures are not enough, yet you want to do more universities. Uh, but this is the truth. If you look at those universities, you will find out that most of the lawmakers want those universities situated in their constituencies. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I have some statistics here. So, as of right now, Nigeria has a total of 52 federal universities, and 32 more will make it 84. However, Right now, in Nigeria, we have about 514 universities, some of which are um, private universities at 262. We have state universities at 147. We have federal universities at 52. Okay, 63 states, 147 private universities, which sums up at 262. Now, we have colleges of health, which is 70, and private 17. The total number is 514. Now, if we add another 32, it will be 546 universities in Nigeria. Do we need that much universities? Oh, yes, we do, with respect to our population. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you go to nations that are smaller, they have much more universities. So, uh, like I said, I'm not sure the challenge is the number of universities, but the challenge is the timing and the design of our already existing educational system. So our already existing educational system, it does not need more universities as it were with its current design. If we don't adjust that design, make universities more productive and more autonomous, then we will just be bringing more universities that will go through the same already existing funnel that is dysfunctional. So, so, so we, 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 and, and this, this is the truth. If we, if we don't properly understand what our challenges are, we will not be able to uh, come up with good solutions. So the challenge is, okay, we need more universities. But can you make the already universities more functional? So we solve a problem one point at a time. One point at a time. I'm not just trying to rush through and put up pressures. The truth, the universities are not sufficient, but this is not the right time to add more universities. Let's make the ones we already have very functional and productive before we think of adding more universities. Okay, we're talking about the federal universities here, and um, it also relates to the educational system as it is. Children who come out from, from uh, secondary schools, like you, you mentioned earlier, don't always need to go to a federal university, but they need to go to a university. And you've said that the number in Nigeria is so much that 500 and something is not even sufficient. Now, yeah. trying to find a solution to accommodate all the people that graduate from secondary school, will it be your advice that if the federal government cannot fund the existing ones, they should not have universities, but they should make it easier 
for people who want to establish the private sector to come into the educational system and establish more universities? Do you think that will be part of the solution to uh, the educational problem, that we, or infrastructural problem that we have in the educational system? Well, uh, based on data, uh, I'll say they should allow more people uh, uh, drive the private uh, institutions because if you look at the already available private universities and the solution it is given, okay, some private universities are already in the top 10 universities in Nigeria. Mm. Uh, 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 solving or actually uh, a, a part of the, the, the solution. So, yes, allowing more private universities. Now, uh, many years ago, not many years, in 2018 here, we worked on some projects to bring in uh, an, a private university. And I must tell you, the requirements are incredulous. I mean, my use of work, mm -hmm. they are incredulous. A particular number of acreage of land, the amount of money you must have. So it's actually difficult for private institutions to get in. And I understand because sometimes running a university is not the same as running a daycare center or a secondary school. Mm -hmm. It's much more than that. The investment is massive. And you will require a bit more standardization so you don't allow every Tom Dick and Harry to get into space. But I think it's too complex and they should try to minimize uh, the requirements so they can allow more private institutions to enter into it. I need to add this also. And that is that universities are really set up because of this bias of the environment we're in where everybody wants to go to a university. Now that's a discussion for another day. But I think we also need to start making our monotechnics and monotechnics also viable. Start making them more effective. Start making them also have the capacity to train and raise people that will be competent individuals in the society. I know that's a different argument from the conversation <laughs> we're having now, but we need to start looking at that. So the pressure is not always on universities, universities, universities. What's happening to our Federal College of Technology? What's happening to our, our polytechnics? And what's happening to all of that? Hey, those two must be must become viable to be able to help us uh, manage the population we're dealing with. All right. Talking about investment in these universities, um, we just w the president is going to be presenting the 2024 budget tomorrow. However, in that budget, we have um, a loan of one billion dollar. Now, if we're saying we have to create more universities, isn't that going to take a chunk of the loans that we're getting? So now uh, this argument has has been common uh, has been constantly here. You know? If, if only we can reduce the amount of wastages and the things we're wasting money on and divert that investment into the things that really, really matter uh, in our environment. I understand that maybe uh, we were not making as much money as we should be making, but the truth is the money we even have available, we are not properly distributing this into the required places that it is meant to go into. So I think one of the things we must concentrate on is, is redistributing what we already have. If you look at the way we waste so, so much wastage taking place. You will know that if we redirect some of our investments, I think some of these universities will become a bit more buoyant and a bit more, uh, more, 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 more self sustained. Because if you look at it, for education, education is not cheap. You need investment into education, the learning environment, how to properly regulate lecturers and teachers. Making it an environment of research and development needs a lot of investment. And until we start to think of how we can make it uh, either self-sustaining or pumping investment into it by blocking wastages and redirecting money into the places that matter, uh, we, will, we will just keep, keep, keep prolonging the days where we will have an eventual point of chaos at some point. All right. Um, so according to you, you've said we need these universities, we need more universities, but here's my thought. Do you think the lawmakers should be talking about more universities? How about these students that go to these universities and they come out without jobs? Shouldn't we be looking at job creation instead of more universities? Because now you're creating more universities, more students are going into this school. So imagine the influx of students that go on a yearly basis. Let's peg it at maybe... 10 million now you're creating 32 more universities let's say that would that would now make it about 15 million they come out go for their um, youth service and then there are no jobs shouldn't the lawmakers be looking at creating jobs for these students than creating more universities at this time i agree with you and that's why i agree i agree with you and that's why i said it's a function of timing well the truth is most of our universities are already massively congested. So if you go to certain universities, the classes are, 
uh, maybe the 250 to 1, 125 to 1, which does not even suit international standards. Okay, so uh, more, uh, more universities are not necessarily mean more people. It might just mean the redistribution of people that already exist in those universities. But I agree with you that what we should be having conversations about is not even just job creation. That's even at the end of the funnel. Conversations we should be having is even curriculum content. Mm. What are these people learning in the universities? What kind of courses are we now designing in our universities? Most of these courses are absolutely obsolete. Awesome. Some schools, you can't believe that the Nigerian universities were not even looking at maybe fintech or Tech. digital media, you know, or things that are happening. Okay, so curriculum is a very important part of it. We're not even looking at that. So I, that's why I mentioned earlier that the problem is not, and it's basic design thinking. You are looking, you are trying to solve a problem that you should put up till later now. And there are many reasons behind that further universities being pushed at this point. Like I said, if you look at those federal universities, most of them are domiciled in certain constituencies. So for most people, it's really like a constituency project. And they're not thinking about the long-term effect of most of these decisions. So I agree with you that we should be looking at curriculum. We should be looking at how do we uh, drive internships. We should be looking at what are these children learning? Where, where are they going to go to? You know, those are the things we should be looking at now. And, and I agree with you. But that doesn't negate the fact that we need more university Problem is timing and implementation strategy. Okay, um, well, you said the first thing is to look at the ones that are already existing and see how it can be funded better. Do you think with improved infrastructure within the universities that we have, we can take more students and have better quality education? So, certain universities were built for certain capacity and, and this is this is this is this is this is this is what this is what 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 long-term thinking does now if more investment is made obviously there will be more infrastructure so there can be a, a, a level of improved there can be some improved level of learning in these universities okay lecturers more quality lecturers lecturers of their proper excited with their jobs we have more more uh, equipment to learn more research is being done then we can then because the problems don't stop you keep iterating you keep you keep moving from one level to another as you solve one another opens up so you see you keep moving from one level to another because when you are done building infrastructure in this particular university another thing can be a function of space okay can you can this university handle the numbers that are coming in so you set up more to you know so it's it's a continuum you see and that's why it's design thinking we keep iterating from level to level so we can't just say if you do this to solve all the problems at this instance and we will no longer have problems but i agree with you that if you develop the infrastructure as of today look at the current universities we have change and i keep hammering on this work on the curriculum of the existing universities to, to position children for the 21st century and its development and advancement, then you cannot start talking of more universities. Another, another thought that I have is um, in yesterday's papers, it was said that a lot of um, lecturers are moving abroad. So what are the resources we have for people who are supposed to um, give knowledge to the students? Yeah, so uh, this remuneration issue is, of course, is a long conversation with the function of labor, function of uh, of, of, of uh, what the standard salaries of federal government workers are. You see, so that's 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 you see that's why I said there's there's a multi-level layer to these conversations. But I think uh, one of the things that is important is that lecturers need to start having a sense of fulfillment, mm. okay, with the and they do. All right. Um, the reason why they go to the Western world, for instance, and you see, if you do a comparative analysis, academicians in the Western world will tell you that in comparative analysis to other jobs, they are still being paid low. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so but, the, but the difference is they have a social system. Okay, they can get a house with mortgage, for instance. They can mm -hmm. buy a car with mortgage. They can, you know, so there are other things that can serve as pushing effects, okay, around them, which we don't have uh, in this country. The lecturer is going to go to the same car shop as you who is in private sector. The lecturer is going to have to pay his rent for one year stretch. <laughs> mm. Okay, so the, the conditions are the same for everybody. There's no, there's no sort of social system, uh, you know, that is creating a pushing effect for these lecturers in spite of their remuneration. So you see, you will always have that challenge and that's what is making uh, the flight. So people are, even most of the lecturers were able to relocate it. Some of them are not even continuing in academics. They just want to be out of the where they can, they feel they can build 
a, a future for themselves. So I think that's that's the most important. Nigeria needs to start developing a social uh, uh, sort of system for, mm. for people, not in certain fields. Of course, everybody has to benefit from it. Of course, you're in the studio now. Imagine if you could buy your house and pay over one year or two years. <laughs> you can get it. Big car. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> okay. Um, well, uh, instead of building new universities, could it be something to be considered that uh, the existing ones, if they are put in order as it is, they have more satellite campuses that will take more students? Will that be a good proposal? Now, so the challenge with satellite campuses, you know, we used to have satellite campuses in Nigeria, and, and, and the challenge was actually... And maintenance standard. You, you know, it's like franchise. You, you know how we, you know, uh, you know, you can go to different eateries. They are the same eateries, but you feel that oh, the food tastes different. Okay, uh, and that's the challenge with satellite campuses. I, I think that what the universities just wanted to be able to uh, have some level of control over over uh, how people learn. Uh, and wanted to be able to standardize the learning, and that was why satellite campuses uh, were were affected a bit. So, so, so I, I think I'll understand why. Uh, they try to limit satellite campus because the danger is: will you be able to maintain the same quality of learning across the board? Because the satellite campus, you might not have the administrative monitoring that happens when you are on the campus of the university site. So, what is the role of tech in all of this? Because in other countries, for instance, the UK, there's distance learning, right? In the US as well, in Canada, there's distance learning, so you can actually learn online. Shouldn't Nigeria be thinking of other means, such as you know, using tech? To our own, um, to just to utilize tech to our own advantage, and and just say, okay, we know that we have this amount of students that are not able to go into these universities because we do not have enough. However, we're creating another avenue for them to still be able to learn, for them to still be able to earn a degree, and so they can learn online at the comfort of their own homes, and we'll still have um, lecturers and counselors and everyone who can monitor their progress. I agree with you, but, but I hope you know that your constitution, your constitution does not allow this standard level for the graphics. It's a mm. constitutional issue. <laughs> so that brings the federal government to be looking at it, okay? But that's why I'm asking that shouldn't we be looking at that? Yeah, and even in the constitution, that, yes, we should be able to move that way because the constitution was created at some point. However, nothing is cast on stone. You should still be able to move certain things, um, be fluid. Yes, that's the word. Be fluid with the constitution and say, okay, this is where the, mo the world is moving into right now. The world has moved to tech. That's where we are right now. No matter how you look at it, it is still what it is. So we should be able to move in the constitution and say, let us allow this thing. Because at the end of the day, it's for our own advantage. Even home yeah, learning. So, so I, yeah, that's a distance learning. learning. Even, home schooling. But, but even globally, not everybody does online learning. And that's a business decision. Okay? <laughs> that's a business decision. And I'll tell you why it's a business decision. So if I'm learning distance learning, and I'm, I'll have to pay $5,000, for instance, because it's distance learning. Okay? If I was to be on campus, maybe I'll be paying $16,000. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, so, so even, even the Western world, not all the costs are distance learning. If you notice, even the Western world... Uh, they will usually do postgraduates. Mm. You have more postgraduate distance learning courses. Because they understand um, that you would have your jobs and you're doing other things, so you need to be able to infuse both of them. Exactly. Yeah, so, but why so can't we have do. that? Why yeah. can't we have that? Because the postgraduates are still struggling yeah, for space so in our regular universities. We have. So, so I, know, um, um, I know of, I don't know if I can mention the name of the university, it doesn't look like it's from advertising them, but I know... A university. Uh, one, one university who, who is doing its MBA remotely, okay? Mm. Uh, it's in another part of Nigeria, it's doing its MBA remotely. Uh, but, but of course, I, I agree with you that most postgraduate studies can actually be done online. We don't really always have to go to these environments. And of course, it's also because of the control mechanism of our African environment, okay? Must you see everybody, you know? It's until I see you, I can con You know, it's, 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 funny. it's a mindset thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a funny psychology, yeah? It's, it's a psychological thing. But I, but I think I agree with you that if we do more postgraduate studies remotely, it will not even create spaces on the mm -hmm. campus for the academic students. Exactly. <laughs> of the infrastructure, you know, and, and let use most of the school. So, uh, yes, I agree with you. And, and I think the lawmakers, so for instance, that's what the lawmakers should be looking out for instead of thinking of building more universities. How do we decongest? How do we... 
For instance, I know a private university that is trying to say, you know what, from 300 level to 400 level, can we start taking your courses remotely and leave the campuses for 120 level students? Yeah? But guess what? You are going to have another problem. Do you need as much lecturers to do distant learning as physical learning? I have, I, I think I might have a solution to that. So most distance <laughs> learning um, courses, yes. most times they create yeah. videos. You have videos. <laughs> That's well, how you learn, and it's done one thought, time. I thought you were going to say, I'm going to use AI. To There's AI as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's technology. It's technology. It's technology. Mm. Sorry? You only fall to be a course, only one lecture can do that. The problem with that is that you are going to move people out of the job, then you face us again. Mm. Voila. What do, voila, what do we end voila. with? <laughs> Okay, well, uh, if we talk about the problems of uh, Nigeria, and especially the education or the educational system in Nigeria, we might spend days here talking about I mean. it. Like you said, it's multifaceted. It's layer upon layer. Mm. And so when we're trying to dissect every item, we might not finish from here. So we'll drop the ball here right now today <laughs> on this topic. We'd like to thank you so much for coming on the program this morning and bearing your thoughts uh, to us. Thank you, thank you. Lord Aaron. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. We've been talking with uh, Oludari uh, Oludari, Oludari. Akinlaja, Management Consultant and International Development Advisor here in Lagos State. We were talking about the fact that the lawmakers are requesting for 32 more universities. Is it necessary or is it not? Yes, it's necessary, but there are so many layers that we have to surmount before we can get to that point, uh, according to his advice. And this eventually is where we wrap it up on the show this morning. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Let's do it again tomorrow. My name is Roman Paulson. Have a good day.